but you have to file something. You cannot ignore when a lawsuit has been filed against you. And it appears in this case, that is what uh, Diddy and his team did. P. Diddy has less than a month to respond to a summons straight from the music producer who says Diddy abused him for more than a year. So you cannot tell me that Diddy and his team do not know the procedure. The question is, why are they stalling? So what does all this mean for the disgraced rapper? If they don't file a response within the 21 days, case is over. We, we could see a whole lot of things happening in the course of the next few weeks and few months with regards to Diddy and his legal woes. It's been nearly a month since federal investigators raided two of P. Diddy's homes in Florida and California. And while no criminal charges have been filed against the 54-year-old Sean Combs, many startling accusations have been brought against him. He's been known in the entertainment industry for three decades under multiple different names from P. Diddy and Diddy to Puff or Puff Daddy. And for years, he was publicly celebrated as a rapper, record label executive, and entrepreneur. But in recent months, things have changed. And that law school was just explosive in the level of violence she endured and showing a whole different side of Diddy that none of us were very familiar with. That's former prosecutor Melba Pearson, who has been closely following Diddy's case for months. She says things really changed last November when Diddy's ex, Cassandra Ventura, also known as the singer Cassie, filed suit against him. Cassie kind of got into the frame with her discussion of him forcing her to, to do all sorts of horrible, degrading things on camera against her will as part of a control uh, mindset around as, as part of domestic violence and also just as part of exploiting a young woman who wanted to work in the music industry. And she had talent and she released her first album, but a second album didn't come forward because of the fact that Diddy was being so abusive towards her and trying to railroad her career in exchange for her doing these horrible these sexual acts that she did not consent to. Cassie and several others filed civil suits against Diddy under the New York Survivors Act. Of the Adult Survivors Act, which gave survivors of sexual assault or sexual harassment a second chance to be able to file charges, even though in a civil context, so let's be clear, not criminal charges, but file a civil claim, it gives them that ability to do so, even though the amount of time which you normally have to file a case has elapsed, right? So, you know, statute of limitations, most of the time is within a few years, but now we're looking at events that have happened 20 years ago and all of that. So that's how some of these other high profile sexual assault and sexual abuse cases have come to light. It was really Cassie's lawsuit that broke open the floodgates of countless allegations against Diddy. According to Cassie's suit, Diddy allegedly raped her, forced her to have sex with prostitutes, beat her physically and controlled nearly every aspect of her personal and professional life for years. She also alleged Diddy forced her to carry a gun, which is a theme we saw laid out in Rodney Jones's lawsuit filed in February. He's better known as Lil Rod and is the music producer whose nearly 100 page civil suit made major waves in February. But before we take a deep dive into Lil Rod's allegations, let's backtrack for one second to lay out a few more lawsuits claims against Diddy. In the wake of Cassie's lawsuit, which was actually settled just one day after it was filed, others came forward. That means Diddy also faces civil suits from Joy Dickerson Neal, Liza Gardner, and an unidentified Jane Doe. All their stories are eerily similar, that Diddy assaulted these women in New York from the early 1990s to early 2000s. Joy Dickerson Neal says Diddy raped her and recorded it. Liza Gardner says Diddy gang raped her and later choked her to the point where she lost consciousness. Jane Doe opted to exclude her name from the suit, but did include multiple pictures of herself at Diddy's studio in New York. The pics were taken when she was just 17 years old and the same day she says Diddy raped her. So all this brings us to Lil Rod, whose 74 page lawsuit was filed back in February. He says his relationship with Diddy began in September 2022 and lasted for months as he worked as a producer on Diddy's Love album. Lil Rod alleges he never got paid for his work on the album, but the other allegations are far more severe. 
He says Diddy sexually assaulted him, groomed him, and forced him to have sex with prostitutes. On top of all this, Lil Rod's lawsuit teases that he has proof. And something he specifically referenced there were hundreds of hours of video footage. He says that Diddy required him to record him. There's a lot of hidden camera allegations, etc. And then we also have federal raids around the same time. So I'm wondering if we can connect the dots between what's happening there. Is it possible that the feds are looking for these recordings during the raids? Without a question, without a question, they're looking for those recordings. They're looking for anything that's going to substantiate the statements that Cassie Ventura made in her lawsuit, that the other women who have come forward, their allegations, as well as the allegations of what Little Rod has stated. It's not a matter of just looking at his lawsuit alone. You have to look at the totality of what everyone is saying, and that is going to guide you towards the types of evidence you need to look for. So we're good, you know, I would, I would assume that agents are looking for uh, video cameras, looking for surveillance footage, which would then include possibly getting warrants to look at different cloud servers to be able to find that footage, right? It may not be literally, we're not thinking back in the day, VHS tape that is going to be found in somebody's closet and be entered into evidence. May happen because again, keeping in mind, he's been active since the 90s and some of these, some of this abuse may have happened in the 90s. So there may be a VHS tape, but again, look, trying to ascertain where you can get that footage, looking for drugs, looking for, um, let's say if one of the survivors said that they were assaulted in a certain manner in a certain room and maybe they remembered a carpet or they remembered a couch or something like that, documenting that evidence because that is going to substantiate what the survivor said. When you have a situation where someone was horribly violated in, a, in that manner, and a, also there are allegations that he would drug people and you know get them completely inebriated, again, against their will, there are going to be gaps in the survivor's memory as to where they were, what happened first, et cetera, et cetera. So finding those pieces of evidence is going to be critical to link Diddy to these activities and these horrors that he inflicted upon unsuspecting people when all they did was come to a party and, and what they thought was going to be a good time. Let's pause this P. Diddy story for a quick second to thank Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's Law & Crime News Package. It's stories like this that remind you you never know what's going to happen, and the world is an unpredictable place. So when you're hurt, it can be confusing, it can be scary, and you don't really know where to turn. Well, enter Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less on your phone and find out if you have a case. If you do, your injury could be worth millions. In the past couple of months, they've gotten verdicts of $12 million in Florida, 26 million in Philadelphia and 6.8 million in New York. Also, they have over 1,000 lawyers, so you know you'll be in good hands. So if you're interested, you can start by easily submitting a claim at www.forthepeople.com slash lcnews or by dialing hashtag law, that's hashtag 529 on your phone. All right, let's get back to that story. That brings us to Lil Rod's summons filed on April 17th, saying the defendants in his suit, namely Diddy himself, have 21 days to respond to the suit. To understand the summons, Melba says we have to start at the beginning when the lawsuit was first brought on. So when someone files a lawsuit, right? You go to court, you're, you, know, you work, work with your attorney, you file a lawsuit around whatever issue, right? The party that's being you, the party this person that's suing is the plaintiff. The person that you are suing is the defendant. The defendant has to respond to your lawsuit within a certain amount of time. That response uh, basically is going to talk about, well, either A, I'm admitting everything that you're saying in your lawsuit. So, okay, never mind. Uh, we'll just figure out a settlement. B, I'm denying everything that's in your lawsuit. So, judge, we need a trial date because this isn't going to be resolved. C, I'm admitting to part and I'm denying part. So again, the question will be, we're going to be looking at a limited amount of things. Or uh, you could have a situation where the, the de defense says, you know what? I want to file a motion to dismiss because everything that, that's here is just 
complete nonsense, for instance, right? And Melba says Diddy and his attorneys are required to respond, and if they don't, Lil Rod just wins by default judgment. But you have to file something. You cannot ignore when a lawsuit has been filed against you. And it appears in this case, that is what uh, Diddy and his team did. They have not filed a response and they have 21 days from the date that the lawsuit has been filed to respond. They have not done so. So if they refuse to respond at all, then that means little Rod wins and that's the end of the case. So basically what the judge says is, you know what, since you have chosen not to respond, we're going to take that as an admission and whatever amount of money and whatever relief or remedy that little Rod is seeking, we're just going to give it to him. So that's why it's going to be very critical in the next few days to see what Diddy's team is going to file. Are they going to file an answer saying that they admit that Little Rod worked for him and maybe engaged in a few things? Are they going to come up with some kind of affirmative defense? So in other words, we did this, but we did this for a really good reason. So for instance, we were videotaping, but we believed that other members of the bad boy family were engaged in human trafficking. And we had cameras around just to be able to capture that information, right? I'm throwing that out there as a hypothetical. They're probably not going to say something like that, but that could be in theory, a response to, I did this, but I did it for a really good reason. Therefore, judge, do not give this person relief. I was right to do what I did. So that's sort of what we're looking at here in, in, in the in this case at this point in time. That means Diddy and his team have just a few weeks to respond to the summons. So the, the main question here is when the deadline is for them to respond. So it was 21 days from the day that you were served. So a lawsuit is basically valid once it's been served on the opposite party, right? So the plaintiff has to make sure that the defendant is served. Usually you get a process server, you can use law enforcement to do that, but there's a variety of ways that someone can get served. But 21 days from the date of service, now one small caveat, you get the day that you actually got served is a free day. So starting the next day is when your 21 days run, right? So you get that first day to be like, oh my gosh, I've just been sued. Okay, you look at the lawsuit, you call counsel, and then you have 21 days to respond. And then I think that day buffer is just a way to kind of give people time to make some arrangements and get counsel, especially if they weren't expecting a lawsuit. And because of Diddy's experience with Cassie's lawsuit last fall, Diddy's team already knew the protocol. But in this instance, again, what is so interesting is that Diddy knew this lawsuit was coming. And I say that because he already went through it with Cassie Ventura. You have multiple other women that have come forward. He settled with Cassie Ventura within 24 hours of her suit being filed. So you cannot tell me that Diddy and his team do not know the procedure. The question is, why are they stalling? Because if they let it get to the point where the suit ends up getting a, what they call a, a judgment, basically a directed judgment, where the judge gives the plaintiff everything they're asking for because the defendant didn't respond, that's going to be a hefty amount of money for him. Again, he may be doing that in the hopes of, of letting it hopefully die down and it be less damaging to his brand, but it's kind of too late for that. If he wanted to settle, he should have done that the same way he did with Cassie Ventura within 24 hours, because now everything is out in the open. So that means within the next month, the next three-ish weeks, we could be hearing what's ahead for this, whether they're going to head to a jury trial, whether they settle, whatever Diddy comes forward with, we should know pretty soon. Absolutely. We'll know because first of all, if they don't file a response within the 21 days, case is over. If they do file a response, now it's going to be very interesting to see, again, what they say in the response. Are they going to admit to what happened? Are they going to deny it? Are they going to find a way to victim blame and shame little Rod for the things he was forced to do? Um, who else might get caught up in the universe and get mentioned within these new this response that may come from, from Diddy's team? We don't know. Uh, it'll be unlikely that we'll have a trial date right away, but certainly what will happen is that the judge would set a date for basically a hearing to look at the two 
uh, you know, the, the lawsuit as well as the response, not necessarily make a ruling at that time, but at least set out a time schedule with the idea of, okay, if further motions are needed, I need to see them in 30 days. If there's going to be some sort of mediation between the two parties, let's have that happen in 60 days. Again, making up timelines, but those are the types of benchmarks that you end up seeing in, in a civil trial. And then eventually looking at a trial date probably you know a year or two from now again depending on depositions and what further investigation would need to be done before that civil case can go to trial but what about diddy's other civil suits is this something we could expect to see from those other plaintiffs jane doe joy dickerson neil and liza gardner that they too would send a summons over to diddy and say hey we need you to respond to this it's possible and the other question is because these lawsuits were filed uh end of last year, earlier this year, the 21 days has long expired on those cases. So my question would, would be uh, if they were so quick to file a response on those cases, because we have not heard of any judgments against him as a result of those cases, if he was quick to file a response there, why is he being so slow to respond in this instance when the allegations are similar? So assuming that a response was filed, then those cases are going to be proceeding. And then eventually we're either going to hear about a settlement or we're going to hear about a trial date being set. And then eventually these folks coming forward to testify and, and share the horrors that happened to them, which resulted in this lawsuit. And I know that the settlements are kept behind closed doors. So what happened with Cassie and Diddy, we don't know the exact number amount. But let's say that Diddy does decide to settle in the four other civil suits. Is it possible that his bank account is taking a pretty large hit based on the allegations and the number of suits that are against him? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would be stunned if the settlement amount was with Cassie would, and we'll never know the amount. But if I had to guess, 50 million somewhere in that ballpark, right? Because again, these are bombshell allegations and the impact it would have on his future earnings, on his career, on his ability to manage other artists, the things that have been his bread and butter for well over 20 years is being incredibly impacted. So if he is going to try to end all of this bad press by settling, he's going to have to do so in large financial amounts. So I could easily see 50 million to Cassie, you know, 25 million to each of the other, um, you know, survivors that have come forward. But then with Little Rod, since he's asking for, you know, I believe north of $100 million, I would think that settlement amount is going to be quite large as well if a settlement happens which again, we'll have to wait and see because, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of moving parts here. If criminal charges end up getting filed, that will stall the civil proceedings because again, that criminal t case is going to take precedence. And if that can be tried with a guilty verdict, that is going to make the civil lawsuits that much easier to be able to move forward. So we, we could see a whole lot of things happening in the course of the next few weeks and few months with regards to Diddy and his legal woes. Just a reminder that no criminal charges have been filed against Diddy. We've only seen federal raids and Melba says more could be on the way. I would say that there is a possibility that we may see future raids by law enforcement, because as more information comes to light, that may require them to do further investigation and maybe search other properties, speak to other people. You know, investigations are just very fluid and they can grow basically a life of their own. You could be looking at one person and then all of a sudden somebody else comes into the mix as we've seen now with allegations being levied against Diddy's son. Justin Coates. So now we're going to continue to see people in that party orbit who were partaking in harming, you know, th these folks. You're going to see more and more of those names pop up, and it's going to be interesting to see how all of this transpires. In the end, Melba says it's important to remember the survivors in these cases. And just a reminder that if you see something, say something. Do not be afraid to speak up and that, you know, 
the majority of folks out there do believe survivors. So just as, as, as someone who worked has worked within the system, has worked with survivors, as a survivor myself, just know that there are resources out there for you and don't suffer in silence. And if you know somebody is going through that, try and give them that support because it's incredibly hard to come forward and to say and talk about probably the worst event that has ever happened to, your, to you in your life. When it comes to the federal raids, Diddy's team calls it a gross overuse of military level force, saying there's no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. In response to Lil Rod's lawsuit, Diddy's team says in part, quote, his reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. All we've heard from Diddy himself is in this statement that was posted to his social media back in 2023. It reads, quote, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. There's no word yet from Diddy's team how they're going to respond to Lil Rod's summons, but if and when that response comes, we'll bring it to you right here. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.